guys welcome back to the channel we are back working on the bus it is cold you can see my breath so the issue that we're running into is all the emergency exit doors are part of a circuit that are tied into the starter and the ignition now if one of those doors are open it breaks the circuit and doesn't allow power to go to the starter the way that we've gone around it for now to work on the bus is just taping these switches shut so that way the circuit is always closed but I ran into a problem when we were trying to take the these panels down. I, I took a sawzall and just cut down to the holes and the grommets. Just pulled the wire out that way. Rather than having to cut and splice wires and whatnot. But I also made a mistake because the one wire that I did nick was one of the circuit wires. But it wasn't a big deal because I was able to rebuild the wire and hook it back up. But still had the issue because it blew a fuse. So then I was on the hunt for the fuse. On the fuse block it wasn't actually labeled. So I had, they actually piggybacked one of the wires to one of the fuses. It should have stuck out like a sore thumb originally why they did that. But like you guys probably, I didn't know either. I didn't know what I was doing. So then the hunt for wires started. To find the wires, we just went back to the switch. And the two power wires are two orange wires. Now they are labeled VDL LCK 36. And the other one is VDL LCK 37. I don't know what the VDL stands for, but I'm assuming the LCK is abbreviation for lock, like door lock. So we just find the two wires and you trace them back through the harness, up through the body, and then you get to this mess. You are going to have to pull apart your harness, which looks a lot more intimidating than really it is. There are a lot of other orange wires, so it is easy to get mixed up, but thankfully they're labeled and you can just follow the labels. So you have VDL lock 37 and VDL lock 36. So you got these two wires here. Basically, you follow these two wires all the way down to the harness. And a lot of these wires, they branch off to an access panel that's here. But these two wires follow down where there was a padded wall here, all the way through down. Had to take the, the driver's seat off and pull the carpet up in the matting. You do have to fold it very carefully because Throughout the harness, there's other there's branches that go off to lights, to speakers, to whatever other accessories the bus has. And even in some cases, I've seen that the wires change from, for example, VDL lock 36 to a 35 or a 34. Um, depends, the bus company probably either ran out of wire or they had another system going through. So, but in my case, luckily, I was able just to peel back this matting. It's also a good time to check for rust or anything you might have. But follow these wires here, 36 and 37. These two orange wires. And this is what I was talking about before. So these two wires, instead of going through the engine bay and through the firewall there, they actually branch off on their own harness. That's why it's important to pay attention and follow them very carefully. So these ones go through a grommet over there, through the firewall, into the engine bay. Of course it's frigid out and it just snowed so it never happens when it's warm weather out. It's very hard to see on camera but there's a couple harnesses that come out of three grommet holes. So you can follow the harness which is two orange wires. Two orange wires and purple and a white. The purple and the white are for the alarm system for when, to indicate when the doors open or close, which has already been disconnected. These orange wires go to, one goes to the relay and one goes to the piggybacked fuse on the fuse block. Now the videos I've seen online, the international based like full size school buses, those circuits are usually working on one so a common ground. So if that ground is broken in the circuit, then the starter doesn't get any power. Now. It dawned on me that this bus, which is a 3500 based express, the circuit is actually the power wire itself. The only reason why there's two separate wires is that's creating a circuit. You have one wire that goes from the piggybacked fuse all the way through the bus to each of the emergency exit doors, hits the other side of the switch. The other side of the switch comes back around for this wire. Well, that's why there's two wires, a VDL lock 36 and 37, and goes to the other terminal on the starter relay. Now, in theory, if you just take this one wire that goes piggybacks from the fuse and splice it into the other wire that goes directly to this relay, you'll have power to the relay at all times. So I'll show you how this all works. I'm going to take this tape off the switch. So 
So with this switch open, it opens the circuit between the 36 wire and the 37. And then when you close it and keep it closed, it clicks and closes the circuit between the two, giving power to the starter. So with that circuit open, which is supposed to mimic having the door open, the bus won't start. It won't even try. It just has the symptoms of like a dead battery. Now if you tape the switch closed, keeping that circuit closed and the power flowing, to mimic having the door closed, the starter gets power and you can start the bus. So all I'm gonna do, cut and splice some wires together and see if we have power to switch even when it's open. Before you do this, it's a good idea to disconnect the, the ground cable or the hot cable off the battery. So you don't have power circulating through and get the chance of getting shocked. I'm gonna use this temporary butt connector. I have some nicer ones with heat shrink on them, but this is just to see if this actually works. With those two wires connected, now that relay has constant power from that peak back fuse, and all of this, and that whole circuit, and the door switches and everything should be bypassed and should be obsolete. Now we're gonna reconnect the battery and see if that works. So we're untaping this switch to open up the circuit. You can see that it's open. So there you have it. it bypassed all those two wires that ran through this whole harness to every single one of those doors. Now I'm not sure if that's the case for every other van based unit. Um, I'm assuming they're not far off. And by chasing those wires through the body, you can eventually find where yours goes, if it goes to the fuse block, or if it goes directly to the starter. I'll be honest, I'm a little surprised that that worked. I am not a wiring expert by any means, which should actually give you confidence that you can do this too. It's not hard to chase two wires through a harness. It takes time, if you, if you're patient, you can figure it out as well. I'm gonna go back, take that butt connector out, make it a little more permanent, go back to the harness, rip all the wires that I don't need, and move on to the next project. That's gonna be it for today's video. I really hope this helped you out because I couldn't find anything else on YouTube about this type of bus or even forums. Lauren and I have plenty of work to do left with this bus. It's only just getting started. So if you wanna follow the journey, follow us on Instagram at EOE Schooly. And you can also follow us on this channel, TJ Files. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Fantastic.